guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about looking at different kinds of worm bin systems and different kind of worms. Now what we're going to look in on today is the African night crawlers, which are Eudrilus eugeniae, if we're getting scientific about it. And today, that is exactly what we're going to do. I am going to get into the science of why African night crawlers are so dramatically different than other kinds of worms. So as I'm working through the worm bin here and taking care of them, we're going to talk about my research that I've done in various books and my own experience on the African night crawlers. So if you want to buy African night crawlers, or if you already have African night crawlers and you wonder why they're so different than your red wigglers, keep watching and we are going to go through it bit by bit. First off, let me start off by saying that this bin was managed three weeks ago. We did a, about a five gallon harvest through the bottom panel. Um, I can link that last video at the end if you'd like to watch that. And but then they were also fed about three gallons of food and probably at least four gallons of my prepared bedding. Their uh, food last time, I'll put a picture below, but it was um, a combination of different vegetables as well as some of my bonsais that didn't make it and clippings from my plants. So they got a very good feeding last time. So I want to uh, show you this is the preliminary castings. What we're looking at right now is what they've done the first time around. Now this was just paper and uh, before, and now it is kind of ground up and almost looks like coffee grounds. So between the worms and the critters that live in the bin, they go through it multiple times before it becomes finished castings. So the worms, some people actually think that worms don't eat the food, but they actually do. They do have mouths and they do have openings where they kind of pull things in. And that sort of information is available everywhere from Darwin's first book on the uh, vegetable mold, uh, where it talks about how the worms actually grab the tip of a leaf and pull it in their mouth. So even though they're tiny, they do actually still um, manage to put things in their mouth. They don't have to wait entirely for other things to break them down for them. Okay, so we're still kind of going through here and seeing what there is left of, of the last feeding. We do still see some of the orchid leaves. This was probably a pepper plant. Um, definitely seeing some of the bedding and the avocado shells. <laughs> As you see me going through here, I am uh, picking out labels and, and things of the nature that were on the plants that uh, didn't make it. We've got a lot of sprouts here, probably from the melon that was put in there. It's their favorite food, so after three weeks, I'm not really expecting to see anything. But what you will see is a corn cob. So anyway, getting back to the African night crawlers as a species. They are native to West Africa and they uh, originate in the tropical and subtropical zones there. That is the only place that they naturally live. Now they are at their best when it is 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 24 to 30 degrees Celsius which is one of the reasons that I was not immediately successful with these kind of worms because most of my worms, as you may know if you're not new here, uh, most of my worms are in the basement, which in the winter time can get, you know, close to freezing. That ginger is still going, but look at that, look at that. <laughs> you opened up the ginger and there was castings right inside the ginger. That's so funny. Anyway, I digress. So these, you know, worms are actually as diff are more different from red wigglers and European night crawlers than humans are to any kind of ape. They are completely different families from the um, and I can link to the Wikipedia if you want to watch if you want to read for yourself 
but they're actually that much different. Um, which does explain why some of their personality, if you want to call it personality, is really different than the Red Wigglers and the European Nightcrawlers. Um, so one of the books that I've read where I've probably gained the most knowledge is uh, Edwards and Lofty. The book is called The Biology of Earthworms, and that's probably where I've got most of my information. I do have links uh, below to the books that I've read that I've bought off of Amazon, that are about worm composting, but the book I'm talking about is very specifically about the biology and physiology of earthworms. If you're enjoying this video so far, go ahead and give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. So, as we're going through here, we see that they really did make quick work out of the bedding, which is their, you know, that is their calling card. African night crawlers are amazing. If you have a lot of shredded boxes, newspaper, cereal boxes, they will eat all of it. Now we put in four to five gallons of paper in here and three or four pounds of food. And really only the long-term food is what we're finding at this point. And then looking at what they've already done with the Amazon boxes and the shredded paper, it's pretty amazing what they've accomplished for probably about, I don't know, five to 10 pounds of worms in here. I have not harvested them in a very long time, so I don't know how many of them are in here. All right, so as I go on to their feeding, um, one of the other properties of the African night crawlers that you don't necessarily see in other species is the fact that they um, they shrink. So as the population in this bin goes up, the size of the worm goes down. But according to the book that I was reading, you also, um, you're not limited to a certain amount of worms. So whereas I was afraid that um, the biomass would top out, according to the book, um, you have your greatest biomass when the worms are smaller. And although, you know, sometimes I think maybe that's intuitive, but I also think that sometimes I think that if there's X amount of worms, that population, that larger population, is actually going to prohibit them from breeding. But it sounds like from the book that um, I was going through, it does actually sound like they will continue to breed, but the worms just won't get as big. So they said, Low populations, you have larger worms, high populations, smaller worms, but yet you will have a, there will be more pounds of worms if they are smaller and they won't quit breeding. So I thought that was interesting. All right, so they've got some of that coconut, they've got some crackers, they've got some uh, bread, some pita bread. I gave them some more clippings. But now I'm going to actually give them a little bit of water because this is very dry. Um, and I don't want them to, I do want them to get into it. I don't want them to have to just have this stuff, you know, rot on top slowly. So eh, that's about a half a gallon or about two liters of water that I just put in there. Okay, and so in keeping with what is best for the African night crawlers, I am going to include a lot of bedding in with this feeding. So this is my aged prepared bedding that is about 80% shredded cardboard and paper and 20% coconut coir. If you see a little bit more coconut coir in here, it's because I sifted the soil to make my bonsai soil and uh, the very small particles that would clog up the drainage holes end up going into the bedding for the worms. All right, well, if you liked this video, you're gonna wanna watch the rest of the playlist for the African night crawlers and the vermi bag little mammoth. And I will link that right over there. Now, if you wanna see the last video where I did a quick harvest and then fed them up a ton of food and bedding, I'll link that right over there. And if you've already seen all of that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video down here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.